Hessian fly is one of the most important pests of, of wheat in Kansas, and it's actually the oldest invasive species in North America. We've been battling Hessian fly for a very long time. Uh, it can cause upwards of six bushels per acre per larva per stem. Uh, it's one of those things where if you're growing wheat in Kansas, you don't want to put a lot of inputs like insecticides and other things, then controlling this at the time of planting is really your best option. Our work that we're exploring in this lab is trying to identify genetically resistant strains of wheat. And that resistance is a, a piece of genetics where if a hashem fly goes into the wheat and tries to feed on it, then it turns on a gene in that plant that actually poisons the hashem fly. And so that equip, that sort of naturally existing genetic trait is uh, something that we're trying to identify. Yeah, actually Trevor and I met, gosh, probably upwards of six years ago on another project. This was funded by the Plant Biosecurity Cooperative Research Center out of Australia, which really deals with invasive species. And so Hessian fly um, at that time is not, not in Australia, and this became an actual uh, testing ground for us to understand the use of remote sensing like uh, small unmanned aircraft systems to be able to go into a wheat system and, be, and see if we can detect Hessian fly infestations. When a wheat plant is under hessian fly pressure, when there's been a larva that's gone down into the stem and is trying to feed off of it, if that plant is susceptible to the hessian fly, then it's going to react in different ways depending on the time of year. If the plant's infested in the spring, that can also cause all those different changes in color, but it can also cause a plant to be stunted in its growth. So that's also another signal that we can capture with drone sensors, and we can see those height differences between a resistant or a susceptible variety of wheat. That's what I like about this technology and working with it, is it helps prioritize a wheat breeder's time. It can also help prioritize a farmer's time to where you can map a field and then you can identify these areas that are struggling more than other areas, so that can help then allocate, okay, I need to focus on this variety or I need to focus on this area of the field. I would say in the, in the agricultural space, especially from, you know, look, we're, we're looking at very small plots here, but if you're a, a wheat grower and looking at 100 acres of wheat and trying to make decisions not only on the spot but also into the future, you're going to need access to, to data. Uh, and not only access to the data, but how do you, how do you make inferences about what the data is in, that's in, fr in front of you? And that's what requires a significant amount of analytics. So how do we start to bridge that gap between what the industry needs are and then what the educational needs are? In this case, it's training somebody like Trevor to be able to use his, use his current skills, but bridge that gap with data analytics.